In today's video, I wanted to explain how you can connect an overhead camera for your online music lessons. It's not very difficult and you've got a few different options. So let me show you a couple of the options. So the first one I'm gonna go with is to use a webcam. So this is a Logitech webcam. Uh, I know some of these are quite hard to come by at the moment, but uh, don't worry, I'm sure stocks will come back. If you can't find the, the particular Logitech one and find any brand, if you can get HD, that's really good. That means high definition, and it's gonna look better than um, a standard definition. But if all you can get is a standard definition and you want to do an overhead shot, then go with whatever you can for now. So I'm gonna plug this in to USB, and I've got Zoom running on this computer so you can see what's happening here. Now, when you're um, running multiple cameras and things, you're probably gonna need something like this. This is called a USB hub. Here's another example here. So all that does is just convert one USB port to four or six or however many other USB ports you need. So this is really, really useful for online lessons. So I'm gonna plug that into, uh, I'll plug that into a spare port on the hub. And uh, you can see now that the zoom has automatically switched over to this camera here. So we've now automatically got the two cameras set up. Uh, now, to change between the two, you just go down here to the video area, and then you can change back to, for example, the HD, um, sorry, the FaceTime camera, which is the one that's in my laptop. Now, keep in mind that on iPad, you can't get all these settings. So ideally, while you can start online lessons with an iPad, if you're the teacher, it would be best to use a desktop or a laptop if you possibly can, or you could borrow one, or you could invest in one at some stage. So we already know the signal's working from this. If you do have trouble getting a signal from a webcam, unplug it, plug it into a different USB port, uh, just keep keep trying it. Restart your computer. Sometimes that really works as well. And for me, I've got this microphone boom stand. You can buy these on eBay or Amazon. They're they're not very expensive. It just allows you to articulate a an arm over the top of where you're teaching. I don't have any fancy connectors to hold this on, so I'm just going to use trusty old what we call over here gaffer tape. G A F F E R gaffer, as in um, movie cable people. And I'm just going to gaffer tape that to the overhead just to get us started. So let's say we want it here, just a bit of gaffer tape like that. It's gonna be a really messy job, but you get the idea. Done, and then we can angle that to wherever we need it. So let's flip over to that camera again and see how it looks. Uh, so we wanna change this one here to HD Pro Webcam. And there we go, there's our, my overhead view uh, of the piano. Now it's, you know, I haven't, arranged it beautifully because I'm doing a demonstration for you at the moment. Um, but what you can see is that you can instantly now see over the top at what somebody's doing. You could move it up and down, arrange it as you wish. And it's a very simple matter of flicking back to the HD, uh, the main FaceTime camera. There is a key command I can't remember off, off the top of my head. It's like command something, one of the keys, and you can keep flipping backwards and forwards between those two camera views. So that's probably the easiest way to do it if you have a webcam. And you'll want to obviously get as long a cable as you can and tie that up out of the way. But again, you can sort that out later. If you want, just wanna get started, this is the way to do it. Now, the second way you can get an overhead shot if you don't already have a webcam is to use a device, any device really. So I'm using an iPhone here uh, and I use what's called an iClip Expand, which is this uh, holding device. And that holds any size phone and there's a larger size one, uh, which is actually holding my tablet, which I'm recording this on at the moment. So you can get a larger size one as well. How do we connect this into Zoom? Well, you wanna use the screen share function. So if I go to share here, you'll see that you've got a couple of options. Now, you can share a phone via AirPlay. That means you're gonna be adding wireless capability. Sounds great, but remember, you can add lag and you can add uh, more processing power drain on your computer. So if you can plug things in, I would encourage you to plug things in if at all possible. So here's just a regular lightning cable to USB. It's like the one that you would charge your phone with. I'm gonna plug that in here and I'm gonna plug this one into the USB hub as well. Now, you may get some things popping up saying, uh, as I've got here, do you trust this computer? So I'm gonna say, yes, I do wanna trust this. And you may need to enter your passcode just to confirm that you're happy to trust this computer. Um, and then you can go to iPhone, iPad via cable. So let's click on that one now, and we're gonna to go to share. Okie dokie. Um, so we're now connected. Sometimes it may ask you to download a quick plugin in Zoom. It's free, it's very easy. Just click yes if you need to do that. So I'm just gonna go straight to my camera and voila, we have an overhead view of my piano. So I'm gonna clip that in here and there we go. There's our 
second overhead camera shot. Now I've got lots of cables now <laughs> in the way. You'd want to get, if you want to do this, you'd want to get a longer cable than this one obviously, but you get the idea. This is how you can set things up. Let's now stop the screen share so we're back to Zoom. So the only challenge with um, using an, ID, an iPhone or a tablet is that you have to go through the screen share function of Zoom. So clicking down the bottom there to screen share and then using that button. It's not quite as easy as flicking between two camera views like we did for the webcam. So that's why my preference would always be the webcam. It's the easier one to set up, it's more reliable, but you can definitely use if you've got iPads lying around or whatever, you can probably use them in place of the webcam. And I've shown you that it's pretty easy to do. While I'm on share, there is this function as well for whiteboard, uh, if I share that. Uh, this just allows you, if, particularly if you've got an Apple pen or something like that, to be able to draw things that your student will be able to see on the screen. So if you tend to take notes in a book and you like drawing a circle of fifths or you want to draw a treble clef or whatever it is, then this can be a good way to do that. But keep in mind that if, it's, uh, if you're trying to do it with a mouse, it's um, not particularly useful. <laughs> At least for me, maybe it's just me and I'm not very good at drawing with a mouse, but I find it very difficult. Um, so there you go, that's the overview of setting up. There's two different ways that we could screen share that overhead view for Zoom. I hope that's been helpful. Now remember, the more plugs and devices and USB and all that stuff that's in your computer, the more your process has to work. If you have an old computer, you're gonna hear the fan going, it's gonna start really struggling. So clear out all your old programs, close your browser tabs, turn off all the other software and give yourself the best possible internet connection. You may be able to see down here that I always use a wired internet connection. So this is plugged directly into my router. Uh, it's the best way if you're the teacher uh, to get the best signal for your lessons. So there you go. Now in a future video coming out really, really soon, I'm gonna show you how you can actually split screen all these views onto Zoom so that you can actually have a keyboard and yourself all on screen at the same time. Uses some software called Minicam and that's coming up really soon. Just last thing before I go. You can only see me in my Zoom window at the moment. I haven't got a student um, logged in. So let me log in as a student so you can see the two windows because I've got just a quick tip to finish with about how you can make sure you can see what your student's doing because I've had a question about this a few times too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use my phone now and I'm going to call in to this Zoom room. So you'll see this camera now show up in the Zoom Room. Now this is another trick you can use if you want to avoid cables and all this kind of stuff in order to get an overhead camera view. You can actually dial in using the Zoom app to your room and show this directly as another participant in the room. The only issue is that remember that if you go over two participants in a room you're going to have to pay for the plan or limit your lessons to 40 minutes. Now Zoom isn't particularly expensive so I would just say if you want to do that go for it. Let me log in now to this room so you can see what it looks like for a student coming into the room as well. And I'll also show you that hack about being able to show the overhead view too. So hopefully you'll see me log into the room in a minute. All right, it's connecting. There we go. Okay, so here's me uh, from the side, <laughs> you can see. We've now got two people in the room. Uh, I'm gonna turn the sound off on this or you're gonna hear lots of echoes and weird stuff. So let's say that this is your uh, piano student view and I can see myself at the top of the screen. So there's a couple of different views you can have in Zoom. So there's a gallery view here. So we could click on gallery view. You can now see you and your students side by side and probably many of you are using this view. This is the one that I particularly like. But if you do need a close up version of your student, then just click speaker view and that will make them full screen. And it'll actually, Zoom's quite clever, it'll actually toggle between whoever is speaking at the time. Uh, so that's a great way to do that. So that's it, I hope that's been helpful uh, in regard to getting an overhead view and just a couple of other little quick tips and hacks for Zoom. If you've got any questions at all, please leave them below and uh, I look forward to hearing how your online lessons are going. See you soon. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then please make sure you click to subscribe. And if you're a music teacher looking for help with any aspect of your teaching studio or business, then make sure you check out topmusicpro.com for all our membership details.